All right, all, and welcome back to a new video on the day four preview for the Leopardstown and Limerick Christmas Festivals. Hope you had a very good day today. For myself, it was very much an up and down day. Plenty of peaks and troughs. It started well. Uh, it was dreadful during the middle, and it ended quite well. So overall, a couple of points down on the day. Thanks to um, winners for Gatsby Gray at six to one, and it's not in it at fifteen to two for Ollie McEarn and, and Paul Nolan, two long-standing uh, trainers that I stand by on this channel. So good to see those guys uh, sorting the boys. Out. But other than that, unfortunately, a fairly desperate run of things up in Leopardstown wasn't my day whatsoever up there. Uh, so to come out of the day only a couple of points down actually felt like a bit of a, not a bonus, but it felt like a not a bad effort considering an awful lot went wrong at Leopardstown. So moving on to day four, we're going to get through these pre plenty quick enough and try and uh, back a couple of winners and maybe finish the week on a good note. Starting off at the 12 o'clock, the Adair Man and her handicap chase over two mile five. Going to play two in this race. Favri Logique at 11 to two for Ross O'Sullivan and Shane O'Callaghan. He's been in very good recent form, uh, including the last couple of starts, but he won a few starts back as well. Uh, he's usually a very good jumper, so the fact that he fell a couple of starts back with really a bit of an anomaly, uh, but he seems to be in very good form. The slightly better ground on the chase track at Leopardstown will suit this horse because he wants a bit of better ground. And at 11 to 2, he should take a fair bit of beating to get out of the frame with five places being paid by the lot of bookies. That being said, the one I'm more interested in this race is Millen to 1 at 10 to 1 uh, for Francis Flood. He won on this card last year in the handicap hurdle. And this looks to be a bit of a long term plan for me. Three beginners chases before a two mile handicap chase last time out, where he was outpaced but ran nicely in third. He's stepping up to two and a half miles for the first time in a handicap over fences, and he could take a fair bit of beating at 10 to 1. He's certainly looks overpriced. Well, 12.35, two mile four maiden hurdle. Not going to have a play in this race. Going to let it uh, go by. I think Kilcross will more than likely win, especially with the way the Mullins horses have been this week so far. But at 8 to 11, there's enough to take him on. Don't want a back journey with me because the Bromhead's horses are a little bit in and out at the moment, I think. Uh, so I'm not particularly pleased or want to put up the Bromhead horses. And as a result, Enough to just say for myself to give it a fairly wide berth and see what happens. The 110 race, on the other hand, I'm going to play two in the Mare Sirtle over two and a half miles. Uh, Royal Cahalla at 9 to 2 being probably the main one of the two for Peter Fahey and Kevin Sexton. It just has to prove that she goes quite as well left handed as right handed, and that's probably the reason we're getting 9 to 2 about her. But it was a really nice reappearance run, I think, and plenty to take from that if she comes forward with natural improvement. The other one was also in that race and ran in the international hurdle. Heaven help us at 13 to 2 each way. I just didn't think she ran a race in the international hurdle. She backed off the first and she was then further back than she would have wanted to have been, and Danny Mullins gave her a fairly easy time of things uh, once her chance was gone. I think back to a favoured track like uh, Leopardstown over two and a half miles which looks a more suitable distance these days for this mare uh, she could take a fair bit of stopping of getting out of the frame so 13 to 2 not a bad each way play the 145 the Neville Hotels Andy, or Neville Hotels Novice Chase a grade one affair and it's run wild Fred at 3 to 1 who I think will take a lot of beating in this race having won the Troy Town it finally clicked they finally found out how to ride this horse I think Vanillier is a fairly decent opponent he could put it up to run wild fred but i think he should be beating the rest of them really because uh, i think top handicap form is as good as what some of these bring to the table and with him in a better form than maybe he was this time last year, I think he's come forward a lot as a horse. I think three to one for Run Wild Fred, not a bad price. The two twenty, the Matheson Hurdle, pretty straightforward for me. I actually am probably siding. Well, no, I am siding with Charger, but I'm actually probably siding on the air of backing him at four to five rather than not because I just don't think it's that bad a price. Especially if you got near even money. Like, if you got even money tomorrow, you'd think it would be an absolutely storming price about Charger. So that's something to bear in mind. Uh, I think he just takes a lot of winning in the a lot of beating in this. Doesn't look to be a great race in behind. Zana here will probably run his race, probably be in the frame. The rest of them have it to prove. So, Charger at 4-5. to five. Don't really like putting up odds on shots, but at this stage, I don't think there's anything that beats them. The 255, the novice handicap hurdle, two in this. A stump town at 7-1 to one for Gavin Cromwell. Uh, Gavin Cromwell's actually had a decent enough week of it so far. He's had plenty of horses run quite nicely, and this horse was a point-to-point -point second, but won on his maiden hurdle debut and has to go straight into handicap company. He might be a little bit above his mark, and he might be a little bit better than handicap company, and that's what I'm hoping he will, will happen. He's 7-1. to one, five or six places available with a lot of 
bookies. I think that's a fair each way price. And the other horse, not dissimilar to a horse we backed earlier this week, Belgo Prince, a horse that disappointed at Cheltenham due to his jumping, but it's good time Johnny. And he's a very good horse, and I think he's a well handicapped horse as well for Tony Martin. At nine to one, if he scrubs up that jumping that he that was his undoing at Cheltenham last time out, if he went back to the form of that Gorham Park run where he absolutely hacked up two starts back, he could take beating in this. And at nine to one he's a good each way price. The three twenty five is the winner's bumper to finish off the Leopardstown card and again not pulling up any trees here but I'm going to be siding with the nice guy at 5-4 to four. he beat Bandonito or Santonito, sorry, I keep calling him Bandonito, of Gordon Elliott, who just got beaten yesterday, heartbreakingly. So I think he's quite a good horse, and he beat him at Fairy House when there was a lot of money for Santonito. I think the nice guy will be able to make it two from two. Moving on to around the grounds, uh, three from Limerick, one from Newbury. Uh, down in Limerick, the 205, a horse I really liked, actually, for the novice handicap on Stevens Day at Leopardstown was Harvey's Key. He didn't end up going for the race, and he's going for uh, this race instead. Two miles, novice handicap hurdle going right handed he's gone up 13 pounds since his clan mail win but he won that head in chest and could take a bit of beating trying to follow up at seven to two he'd be one of my better bets of the day the 240 is the maiden hurdle for uh, auction horses and i'm going to take a chance on the sander clagan and flyer begley form i'm going to back glenn Gooley in this at 11 to 4 he's been a little bit of a disappointment for willie mullins but there's been patches of decent form in there and maybe he just needs a trip and a hurdle in front of him to be seen to his best i'm going to take that chance at 11 to 4 and the 340 race the closing race at limerick the closing race of ireland for these uh, christmas festivals and i'm going to be backing the bally boys who won this race a couple of years ago he's been off for quite a long time for ray hackett but he always loves Limerick and he loves this heavy ground. He's 6-1, to one, not a bad each way play really. Because if he comes back to his best form, he'll take a lot of beating. And the last selection of the day comes from Newbury and it's their shallow novices hurdle. The feature on the card at 3.05, the 2 mile 4 grade 1. And I'm going to be siding with a horse I put up in the any race market for Cheltenham. Gringo Dobrell at 4-1 to one for this race. Dennis O'Regan goes over for the ride for Gordon Elliott. I wasn't sure that this horse was really up to winning a grade one, but this doesn't look like one of the strongest races you're ever going to see. Stage star might take a bit of beating, but Gringo Dobrell's form of Blazing Cal ties in nicely, and the way he's gone about it, his last two starts win winning a bumper and beating adamantly chosen in a maiden hurdle stack up pretty nicely. I think he should have a decent enough chance in this race if showing his best form. Anyway, that's all from me for uh, day four about Leprosan and Limerick and also one Brucey bonus in there from Newbury as well. If you did enjoy this video and if you've enjoyed the videos throughout the week, do give it a like and subscribe to the channel down below for plenty more of these videos. And of course, let me know your selections for the final day, how you've been getting on throughout the week and who are you looking forward to tomorrow to maybe bring us home in a good way. Until next time, which will hopefully be very soon in the new year. Hope you stay safe, stay well, land a few bets, and I'll see you guys then.